Well, thank you for giving us the chance to tell our story. I'm going to tell I'm going to tell a different story about the Surgery Center of Oklahoma this morning than um, than I really ever had before any audience. Um, in 1993, I just stopped filing Medicare claims, and I treated Medicare patients free. Uh, I didn't opt out. Uh, I had read extensively about um, the experiences of Lois Copeland um, and, and Michael Schlitt, members of this organization, and, and Jane Orient, and the, and the folks at AAPS were real, real heroes to me and got me thinking that I needed to better identify leverage in my life and in my practice and just simply eliminate it. So I began to see accepting Medicare payment as uh, receiving stolen property. So philosophically, that's where I was. Recognizing the payment I received for a Medicare beneficiary came out of my neighbor's wallet for the benefit of someone across town he likely did not even know or probably even care about. So it was the most liberating thing I had ever done. And, and I think the punchline, the reason I'm telling you that, is I really thought I was something then. I, I stuck out. I mean, my anesthesia partners said, well, you're a lunatic. I mean, why? yeah, we see your point, but why does this even matter? I mean, if everybody doesn't do what you're doing, why does it even matter? I mean, it's just like, you know, a, a rainstorm and a fan. I mean, it just didn't even matter. And I thought, you know, I'm reading about free markets and economics, and I'm getting educated, and I'm really starting to get it, and I'm, I'm a real free market guy. And it's only now, when I look back, that I realize just how ignorant I was that I realized how on just the beginning of a real freedom-seeking, liberty-minded journey that I was. It's only now. And, and as I think about that, I even think, am I, where am I on that journey now? I mean, can I adequately self-examine right now and know where am I on this path? Well, the next step was to abandon the leverage of a hospital practice as an anesthesiologist. And the only way to do that was to have my own facility. Um, of course, we took no government money at the Surgery Center of Oklahoma from day one. And we've been open almost 20 years now. And we really thought we were real free market badasses. You know, we, we've stopped taking government money. Uh, we're out of network with everybody. And now we own and control our own facility. We're quoting prices over the phone. And there really was that sort of pride that was inex inescapable of, you know, aren't we something? And we were. I mean, it, it was truly unique. But at the time, I, I thought I was perhaps further along in this liberty-seeking journey than I really was. So things are going great. Surgery Center of Oklahoma was an instant success. Very, very lucrative in spite of our pricing. We did very, very well, and we decided we've outgrown this place. We're going to build a brand new facility. We did it without any debt. I mean, we were smart. We identified leverage, and weren't we something? You know, and we just, well, this is awesome. I mean, does it get any better than this? I mean, we're in total control of our practice, out of network, taking no government money, no debt, and aren't we something? Aren't we the free market warriors? Well, we got nearly destroyed. And this is a story I don't tell about us very often. We built this brand new facility, moved in in 2003. And by 2004, Steve Lantier and I were sharpening our pencils, trying to figure out what expenses do we address because we are, we are facing closure. The cartel finally figured out a way to capitalize on the leverage they had against us as out-of-network providers with manipulating uh, deductibles and doubling down and stacking deductibles, making it uh, financially impossible for almost anybody to come through our doors. And so I had a lot of thoughts about our expenses and what's one of the biggest expenses you see if you have a medical practice or a business, 
is health care. So I thought, well, we're paying $20,000 a month to the Darth Vader Blue Cross for our employees' health insurance. How do we, can we just not offer health insurance? And I really thought about it. I thought, well, let's, let's give some portion of that to the employees instead of giving it to Blue Cross and just not offer health insurance. Well, we couldn't be competitive in the marketplace and not offer health insurance to our employees. So I thought, well, I know I'm going to pay $240,000 a year to Blue Cross. Why can't I buy a policy that is, maybe I take $180,000 of risk, and if I don't spend that extra $60,000 giving it to Blue Cross, then I'm the winner. You know, can I get a $180,000 deductible policy for the benefit of my employees? And an insurance friend of mine said, well, that's self-funding. And by the way, you don't have to take $180,000 of risk. I mean, that's not even, that's just crazy. I mean, that's so high. We had 32 employees at the time. And I self-funded. What does that mean? That means we rejected, we seceded from the insurance game for the benefit of our employees. And I'm going through this because I think there are folks in the room who don't really understand what self-funding means. That means I fired Blue Cross as an employer. I seceded from their system and I took the risk. We have 41 employees. We've been self-funded since 2004. And I don't know how many millions of dollars I have not paid Blue Cross. When one of our employees needs a procedure, I write a check. Actually, Jay Kempton writes the check for me because I'm busy and that's what he does. And thank you. So I wanted to go through that because up until that point, you know, weren't we something? Weren't we free market? No, we were feeding the beast. When we were self funded, we began to understand from the employer perspective. What is the sticker shock of purchasing health care? That ushered me into another place in my kind of liberty journey. I started to think of myself, well, now I'm actually a consumer. I'm seeing it from the consumer side a little bit more clearly. We still almost died. So we self-funded. We took $240,000 we were paying to Blue Cross, and instead banked it and used that to pay our employees health care bills. In the first year, I think our entire spend was twenty five thousand. So we saved almost two hundred thousand or a little over two hundred thousand dollars the very first year we did this. So now I'm a consumer in the marketplace. I'm also a physician, you know, with you know a service for anybody that would come to the surgery center of Oklahoma. So I began to see the market from two different sides. And then things got worse. The collusion continued. And we're looking at our expenses when I realized I'm not the only self-funded consumer in the world. My God, there are others who have done this. There are other physicians. There are other facilities that are self-funded. There are businesses that are self-funded that have rejected Blue Cross, United, Cigna, Aetna, Humana, Nazis. So, they were buyers in the in the healthcare system and i thought how do i distinguish myself to these people what do i do how can they know well we how can they know who we are why you know how can i get people into our waiting room we were better quality wise we knew we were better than anybody in this town probably in this region and i knew we were cheaper how did we convey that well, we put our prices online we doubled down. We were at that place where we thought we thought we were we were just these free market badasses and we just had our toe in the water. We weren't even close. We weren't even close to where we needed to be. And so we doubled down. And I think putting the prices online was looking back just another step. I, there's not a day that goes by that I don't either come up with some insight that makes me 
more consistent with the market or I receive an insight from some other person that is part of you know this movement or or the free market movement sweeping the country and these insights I think are instructive and we have to all keep our ears open and understand that wherever and this is like a confession I mean wherever you are in this journey of liberty seeking there probably is another thing you're missing and I would encourage you all to stay open-minded had I not I think been thumped on the head by members of this organization and others in the buying community that are buying health care, I don't think I would have seen it. Um, I can't, the beginning of this journey for me was AAPS. So thank you to all of you.